For this project, we start with a new 2D side-scroller project. Use starter content, or whatever settings you prefer. I like starter content because it gives me a basic level. We'll just call this project Sample Scroller. Once we're in the starting level, you can see it's very basic, but it does have some defaults I like. I can play test the level, run around, jump over some obstacles, so that feature is already built in. There's also a default land on platforms feature. Luckily for me, that's one of the features of gameplay I'm looking for. What we don't have are misses, so I'm going to remove a couple platforms and try to die. This will make the basic level feel more like a game with platforms to land on. I also want to move the starting position of the character. That way it's more like a level, with the player starting on one side, maneuvering through the course and ending up, eventually at the victory location. Now it feels much more like an obstacle course, landing on platforms. Well, that worked out pretty easily, so let's get to work on the item to end the level. Let's keep these blueprints organized in their own folder called Blueprints. Make a new actor blueprint. I called mine Touch and Win. I added a skeletal mesh first, but that step isn't necessary. You can just use the mesh you want to use for the object here or a plane or a collision box, it can be anything. But for the purpose of this project, I want to see it. I went with a cylinder just to keep it simple. You can give it whatever material you like here. I'm not going into materials right now. There are many videos out there that do. For now, I just want to use any starter material. Using starter content will give you many basic materials to choose from. You can also visit the Unreal Engine Marketplace and find many materials. For this actor, I'm happy with this awesome rainbow thing. We also have to add collision, or else the player will step on it, rather than overlap with it. Just expand the collision presets, choose custom in the dropdown. That'll give you the option to change from block collision to overlap collision. Compile the blueprint so we can add some events. Add an on component overlap node. If you add this while you have the cylinder selected in the components window, it will automatically select it for the node. Once the player overlaps with this component, we do want to destroy it. And for now, just play a message. Remember, we're following our development guide, so we're not too worried about the UI yet. So what I like to do is make sure the overlap collision works and then something happens. I'll use this slot to plug in the UI later. For now, a print screen node that tells me it worked is fine. Don't forget to compile and save, and let's place that in the world. Make sure to set the z-axis to zero, or else in 2D the player can never touch it. I'll put it somewhere I think the end of the level should be. Future levels could be much bigger than this one. I like to play test everything to get a feel for gameplay. If something isn't as good as I want it to be, then I can address it early. and that part of it works, so for now I'm okay with that progress. Now let's die. Very similar step here. Make a new blueprint called Touch and Die. I'm not going with a collision box or a trigger box, just a simple box. There might be a better way, but this works for me. I like to size it a little bit bigger in the blueprint, so that when it's in the world I can go back and make it perfect. Making them small to start sometimes can cause them to get lost. Remember to add the overlap collision here, just like the touch and win under collision. Add the same node. 
on component overlap. Here's where it gets different. As soon as I touch this actor, I should die. For now, I just want to make sure my collision is properly triggering in the level. Doing the collision this way also gives me something of a floor to work with within the level. In the future, I may give this blueprint more of a visual representation of danger, so the player will instinctively know to avoid it. For now, however, I just need the blueprint to execute the functions and I need to know they're there. So I'm okay with making a box for now. The other reason I went with a box was to stretch it across the entire level, which will trigger the player death on overlap. Let's try it out. Okay, the collision is triggering properly, but having the player drop to the bottom of the window like this needs to change. This is done in the 2D character blueprint. Find the node for begin play. We want to make sure that when we begin play, we tell the system that our player is in fact not dead. I like to comment my code just so I can find it later. This blueprint will continue to grow with the project, so having it commented now will also help later. Create a boolean variable called isDead, and make it public by clicking the eye icon next to it. Check the box here for expose on spawn, now drag it out to the blueprint field and set it to false by unticking the box. Connect the executable pin from the set is replicated node to set is dead. Then we need to find the tick node, which already has some code, but that's okay. We can pull a branch off of it. Let's give ourselves lots of room because this blueprint will handle quite a bit of what we need to do for the whole game. Once you find the tick node, expand the comment box to give yourself plenty of room to work within the blueprint. Drag off the executable from the event tick into a branch. Drag the false executable into the update animation node to continue playing the animation. Then all we have to do is get is dead, set that as our condition, and tell the tick node to do something when our player is dead. I feel like making him explode. For that we'll use a spawn emitter at location node. First we need to disable character movement. It would be a little awkward if our player could still move while exploding. Drag off the disable movement node, to spawn emitter at location. Set the emitter to the default explosion. Again, you can dive into your own effects later, but for now let's put together a simple process and develop the details once we have something to actually work with. Drag the sprite out from the components window and off that node drag out a get world location. Use the return value and connect the location pin to the spawn emitter node. Don't forget to save and compile. Then we need to head back into the touch and die blueprint, delete the print string, and drag off a cast to 2D player character. Connect the other actor and the object pins between these two nodes, and off the cast node, drag off the set variable is dead to true, and make sure the executable is connected. Compile and save and let's see if all those changes are working like we expect. We'll jump into death and oops, I know what's going on. So this event is firing every tick. We need to insert a do once node, easy fix. Insert that node between the branch and the disable character movement and we're good. I like to test and test again to make sure my changes are having an effect.
and on this one we see that the character is still there. Now there may be a better way to do this, but from what I've learned about Paper 2D, it's best to hide the mesh versus destroy it. So that's what we'll do. Drag an executable pin off the spawn emitter node and choose a set visibility node. By default, it grabbed the sprite for me. Uncheck the box to indicate that it is not visible, and there we have it. Now our character successfully dies. Coming up is the Game Over UI, Quit Game Option, and Retry Level Option.